Welcome back, everybody, to the CF Podcast. I'm Clint. Today, we've got Kaya with us. What's up, guys? And I'm excited to introduce Chief Deputy Matt yeah. and also Sheriff Mark Lamb to the table with us today. Thank you guys for joining us. And, and kudos to uh, Kaya over here Thanks for making you. the connection back in Surviving Man, right? Yeah. Way back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Before that, even, but... <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Because we, we met we at SHOT Show Shot here Show. when he was working with one of the other companies. And yeah. so we made the connection. And then when we saw each other at uh, Surviving, Surviving Man, Man out in Georgia, it was Good like time. five days. Yeah, yeah five, five days. days together. It was right. awesome. Dude, well, what's so funny about this, this has been a long time coming, you know, yeah. and it's and it's not like any of us are busy here, right? Yeah. It's not like any of us are running some sort of political campaign <laughs> or traveling the country for guns and shit, right? Trying to save the world. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and so it's cool to, that SHOT Show has brought us, back to, uh, brought us together here in, yeah. in Vegas and everything. So let's... Let's kick this off. Let's just go ahead and get straight into it, man. So, Chief Deputy Matt, mm -hmm. uh, you are you are ultimately Sheriff Mark Lamb's second in command, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Right. And how long have you guys been in law enforcement now? Uh, for me, I'm coming up on my 31st year. Oh, uh, wow. In just a couple months. Yep. Man. And, uh, it, that's all been with the Pinal, Pinal County. I was going to ask, yeah. old Pinal County. Yep. So yep. From from, for, from the jail? Did you start yep. Jail? Started in the jail and uh, then moved out to the road as a deputy. Uh, did undercover work. I uh, was on our SWAT team for about 18 years. I uh, was a sergeant for about 10 of that 31 years, a uh, lieutenant, and uh, did pretty much everything in the agency. I've, uh, I've done training, I've done, ran our academy, I've done motors, traffic, undercover. I ran our undercover unit as a sergeant. Then uh, as a lieutenant, I was over undercover, anti-smuggling, um, over some of the general detective stuff, and then again on the SWAT team, and I was in command of our SWAT team when I got promoted to his second in command. Man, That's what awesome. I, what a what a career. I'm only yeah. showing you this. I'm pulling pulling my phone up so <laughs> yeah. you can see what he Wait. looked like when he was on the Narcs unit. Are you <laughs> serious? That's you, dude? That was me, yeah. Are, that is amazing. So right. that picture's actually in uniform, so yeah. he put the uniform is on. Is that real hair? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's my. Oh hair, wow! Yeah. We, right. we need to, can we put that on the screen? I was gonna yeah. say, are we, are we allowed to put that on screen? <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, amazing. Yeah. Ryan's gonna focus. Oh, that hold in. on, yeah. let me. Uh, yeah, let me cover up. It doesn't have his number. Yeah. And they can blur <laughs> that out. Right. Yeah, we can blur they that can out. Yeah. Yeah. Or we could just put photo Photoshop. Or uh, you know, that's what the power of is for. You know? <laughs> we got some amazing editors. I'll throw that yeah. image up there. Oh, <laughs> good, I, I thought that was a wig or something. No, that's no, real no. hair. Yeah, that's dude. real. It, color it was, and I love that hair, man. Wait, I is the color? So much. Is the color real too? Yeah, dude. And so I, and it, you <laughs> I know, it's weird because I have the dark beard and the light hair. Yeah, that is awesome. That is too good, dude. And Sheriff Mark Lamb, dude. So how long? How long have you been in law enforcement? And we can we can segue into your political campaign and talking about yeah. your senate run and all that uh but let's get into let's get into your, some of your roots man like first of all and this is a question for actually kind of all three of you i know yeah. i know a lot about your history and stuff yeah. like that kai obviously but law enforcement what 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 funneled y'all to go that route you know what i mean and how long have you been in law enforcement too well for me it's a little bit different i never wanted to be a cop yeah. it was never <laughs> crossed my mind i yeah. didn't grow up i don't know anybody that is none of my nobody in my family is nobody in my wife's family um, I just grew up wanting to be a businessman. Yeah. My dad was like an international business guy. And so I came home, thought about doing the military, but nothing was really going on mm -hmm. in the early nineties. And so decided to get married, had five kids. And yeah. then nine 11 happened. And I thought, man, I want to kind of right. do the military thing. And, but I couldn't make it work financially. And so went back into the business world and 33 years old, my neighbor said, Hey, you want to do a ride along? And I was like, well, sure, I don't care. Sure. yeah, I may as well. So I go on the ride along, it's a graveyard shift on an Indian reservation. Mm. And we go out and one of the calls was a, tw a dad who found a 20 year old with his 14 year old daughter. So mm. uh, we show up, they'd gotten in a fight, the guy runs out the back and we show up and now on the res, you'll have like a house and then it'll be desert behind it. And then sometimes you have these old abandoned travel trailers. And so we're out there looking, I'm armed with a flashlight and courage. I'm surprised they let me out of the car, but I'm out there. Yeah. And uh, I look into this travel trailer and I see what I think is, I see all this trash and, and debris and clothes, but I see what I think is a quarter size of skin. And mm. so I'm like, hey, I think this guy's in here. So sure enough, they go in there tear, underneath all those clothes and trash. He was there. Oh, wow. So they grab him, they rough him up, tase him, put him in cuffs. Yeah. I went home that morning, woke my wife up and I said, hey, I'm going to be a cop. Oh, wow. So Six months it. later, yeah. I was in the academy. How about that? And oh, uh, wow. so I've been in law enforcement about 18 years now. Yeah. I was one of those guys, a little bit different trajectory because I kind of gained some life experience outside of law enforcement. So the way when I came in, I... 
I kind of fast tracked a lot of stuff just because I was at a different stage in life, yeah. five kids married. Mm-hmm. I didn't go out and do things. I was want trying to become a master of my craft. Sure. And so spent a lot of time, um, started on the reservation, spent a lot of time as a drug gang and drug detective. Mm-hmm. But then I started realizing, look, leadership kind of is lacking in this profession. And then also I didn't like what was happening with on a national level with how I felt like they were undermining the rule of law. Mm. And it was under Obama and his administration. I just thought that they were doing things that were really kind of driving a wedge between the public and law enforcement. Yeah. And at the same time, trying to divide like on race and other things. And so I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to run for sheriff. Yeah. Instead of being the guy who complains about it, I decided to run for something. sheriff. Yeah. And, so and you were with Pinal County, right? Then I decided to move to Pinal County so that I could run for sheriff. What department were you with? I started with Salt River, Pima, Maricopa Indian community. So, mm. All right. Which, if yeah. you've ever worked on a reservation, is pretty wild. Yeah. Reservation no, is more yeah, yeah, wild. Really. work Because I know that from the, the whole federal yeah. end of things, like guys who work at a federal level, too, yeah. uh, Indian reservation, you're busy. Oh, mm-hmm. very, very, very busy. busy. And they're violent. Very violent. Yeah. Violent, and, yeah. the, and they're... Somewhat of a warrior spirit, so they're they're gonna be they're gonna do what they're gonna do, and they don't really like the average person say, "Well, how's this gonna affect me or my family?" Yeah. I mean, and a lot of them are involved in gangs too. Yeah. So yeah. the most I know from a reservation or anything is from the show Longmire. You know, which is just yeah. like, it's a great yeah. great show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but that's pretty was, much all you I know. <laughs> when I was watching that show, I wasn't the sheriff, and I kept yeah. thinking. Man, this guy's got more homicides in his county. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Whatever yeah. Absaroka yeah. County is, yeah, it was, yeah. County, which isn't yeah. real. But yeah, right. No, yeah. that's funny. Yeah, good, uh, good but choice. yeah, then I ran for sheriff and was fortunate enough to win, and we can get into the politics of it. But sure. along the way, I uh, there was a sergeant that I had that I really uh, just got close with when I worked at the county. I came yeah. to the county, was there for a few years. And um, when I was getting ready to run, I was like, look, I'm going to need a chief deputy would you be interested in being my chief deputy? And he's, if you know the guy, this is not, the answer is exactly what you would expect from him. He said, look, I appreciate it, but I'm not your guy. Yeah. You need Matt Thomas. And so one of the hardest things was keeping it on the down low while we were running because he was working for these guys and they didn't really love him anyway. Mm. And so we had to keep it on the down low until we won. And That means he was doing something then, right. Then yeah. he had the, he had the yeah. pleasure of, of kind of... Uh, Sticking it to the other guy. Yeah, nice. well, good, man. Well, I mean, Showed up so, basically like, hey, you're in my office now. Yeah, <laughs> bye. And, and, you know, it's the guys that just uh, – there's a lot of guys out there that would dislike guys with integrity, so I can understand. You know? yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. so that's unfortunate. But when I won sheriff, I had been in law enforcement 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. But, you know, leadership is, is not defined by stripes or bars on your collars. There are guys that are leaders in your agency that are – they're not a sergeant. They're not anything. But they lead because of the way they carry themselves and they, the way they, um, you know, the, the, their, their courage, whatever it is. Uh, there's a conglomeration yep. of things. But uh, so Matt and I are real big on leadership. Mm-hmm. We want true leaders. We don't want supervisors. We want people that actually are leading people. Mm-hmm. I've seen yeah. plenty of brass who have no clue what they're doing. That's right. I'm oh, sure yeah. you have to. Yeah, and right. they just get those uh, pins on their collar and they just think they're suddenly – Hey, you're going to do this and that. Yeah, it, right. I've seen it. And that's the, the biggest thing I think for us has been uh, <clears throat> when he asked me to take this job, it was hands down because it was one of the most unique interviews for me because when, when he said, hey, I want to sit down and interview you, I um, said, all right. He said, so you and your wife meet with me and my wife. And I was like, well, what? Why are we bringing our wives? <laughs> 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 and he kind of said, well, they, this is going to be like an all-in thing, you know. Yeah, so right. uh, yeah. we met with the wives, and he gave me his values and mission. And because people assumed, I think, a lot of people assumed that we were friends beforehand and mm-hmm. that he was picking somebody that he was friends with. And we really didn't know. We knew who each other were, but right. we really didn't know each yeah. other. Um, so we sat down. He, he told me all this, and I was like, dude, I'm all in. And, and you, if you have been around him at all, you know instantly he's a genuine human being, right? Amazing, yeah. And so uh, I was all in on, on his mission, and, and I knew because I had been at the agency my whole life, and I knew what we needed, and I knew that he was exactly what we needed. So, And I kind of knew the direction we, we needed to head, which is where he wanted to go. So it was it was just natural to get into that, and, and um, we knew that, 
we were both, I think we consider ourselves humble leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't think we're know-it-alls. We don't think that the, the stars or the bars on our collar make us any better than anybody else. Right. We just understand that we're working from a different position. And so that's kind of the way we treat everything is it's a team thing. And the informal leadership, like he's talking about, um, if you guys work, I know you have military, you have mm-hmm. Fed experience. So, you know, you've had those informal leaders where you, maybe your squad leader or mm-hmm. your sergeant yeah. or whoever, they're the one that's in charge, but there's a dude on that squad that is actually running stuff because that's that right. sergeant will be like, oh, yeah. Hey man. So like, what do you think? And that person's like, yeah, sergeant, we should do yeah. this. Okay. I mean, roger that. Let's go. Right. Everybody's, everybody's got that guy. They're, right. they're go to. Right. And how yeah. important is it to want to go back to being, bringing the spouses in? Yeah. How important is it to, to get that, that support and having an understanding all around? Because I mean, you see it in the military and why there's such a high divorce rate there. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a divorce guy that's in the military. Right. So I'm, I, I am me. I'm talking about me. Right. I've met me and I know what's going on <laughs> here. And it's like, dude, how important it is to have that spousal support. And then you all get on the same page and get an understanding there and now all of a sudden you're, you're not at work having to think about at home problems right you know and that's you're able to keep that separated and on top of that you're able to go home and say today was rough and she's like i know yeah i know and i'm how how can we make it better right and then that that's cool and i think that's really important well and something neat. that we focus on too um we focused on through our tenure there and that we are really trying to pour into right now is when we have somebody that messes up at work when mm-hmm. like one of our people messes up instead of instead of just taking that problem and dealing with it we go backwards and say like what's going on with them personally mm-hmm. that is causing this kind of behavior or could be causing this kind of behavior which is a whole different way than it's being dealt with in the rest of the police community they just they see a person makes a mistake deal with that however it's dealt with and a lot of times it's just punitive discipline mm-hmm. um, and then that's that but the problem is at the core of that mistake a lot of times there's something going on with that guy or gal yeah. and, and we want to dive into that piece because we don't want to just fix this one problem we want to make sure they're not making those mistakes again right and we want to make sure that they have a solid foundation at home and if we can help with that then we're going to do that yeah. yeah it's important so uh that, that's amazing i mean I, i've known sheriff uh, lamb for a little bit now and amazing human being Oh, great leader i've Thank worked you. with a lot of leaders <laughs> and you can just see the difference instantly and the fact that obviously and matt i know i just met you but sheriff lamb picked you that yeah. says enough right that's just <clears throat> period, period. i'm a little bit of a gunslinger yeah <laughs> so yeah. like i like to get out and i'm like hey let's do this and this and when you're that way you you also need somebody that and this was the key to matt was matt knew the agency knew all the policies knew all the things and so a lot of leaders have good good vision and they have drive and they have the willingness to take the risks. But to compensate for that and to complement that, you need somebody that also says, love it, but yeah. we gotta make sure that this, 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 and this. Yeah. And look, sometimes it, you realize, okay, well, that's not gonna work. Mm-hmm. And other times, we don't even know. We're just like, screw <laughs> it, let's do it. There's no yeah. reason why not to. Yeah. And other times, I just do it. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> um, then these guys are like, uh, okay, well, we'll, fi- we'll work, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I think that most people fail to really listen to their internal, every one of us has something inside of us. Yeah. And whether it's God or whether it's what you believe in, for me, it's God. But when you're, in, when you're placed in a position of leadership, whether it's in your home, whether it's in a church, a school, uh, a, a workplace, or in law enforcement, when you're that person, I feel like there's always some level of revelation, some yeah. level of I, something's telling you what you should and yeah. shouldn't do. Right. And most people will talk themselves out of, of things. I saw, heard something the other day that says most um, great ideas and dreams die on the planning room floor. That's right. That is so true. Mm-hmm. And we have tried to kind of plan, but not kill any of the things yeah. that... And I think that's why we've had success and that's why we've taken some chances. And, right. and we also take chances with our people by saying, look, we give you a gun and a badge. Yeah. I should not have to babysit you to do your job. Mm-hmm. And so go do your job. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we're here to support you when you do it. Right. And the, the cool thing mm-hmm. to speak to his leadership was this, is because I was a institutionalized government oh, yeah. boxed yeah. in cop, right? And, and I think I, I thought outside the box a lot, but it was still within parameters that had been set by the institution 
Um, and when he came in, he was like, yeah, I don't like walls. So we're just going to knock all that stuff down. <laughs> right? And so it, it, it freaked me out a little bit because I was used to operating in those parameters right. and we were crossing a lot of lines. Um, not anything illegal or anything, just not industry standard. Right. And, uh, but he brought the business sense to it. And so what he helped me see was outside of that box and start showing me like, I, I know you're like that, mm -hmm. but we're going to do this and yeah. just trust me, it's going to work. And I'm yeah. like, God, this, this feels like it's bad, yeah. but all right, let's go. I'm going to trust you. And we go and then it works beautifully. And you know, you get a couple of those under your belt and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, he's, he's on to something. There's a give and well, take there, too, which is really cool, especially in good leadership. You'll find somebody willing to listen to their subordinates, but you'll also find a subordinate willing to trust their leader. Yeah. Right. You know, and that's that's cool. And obviously we see that. Yeah. But it, you have to earn it. Like when we took <laughs> oh, over, yeah, you can't just well, assume that right? when we took yeah. over, it was kind of like a battered wife syndrome yeah. coming yeah. off the, the previous administration and coming into all of a sudden now. We had to gain the trust of these people yeah. that couldn't trust the administration before. Mm -hmm. And so. We had to do little things. There was little little things that they may not have realized we were doing, but they were little things. We started letting people have goatees. We started doing No Shave November. We yeah. let you, yeah. we, the, before <laughs> that, uh, you had to cover all your tattoos. Yeah. And so we said, look, we're not doing that <laughs> yeah. anymore. Right. So little things that we said, you can trust us. We're, yeah. here it is. Yeah. We're not gonna, we're not busting you guys for these things. Mm -hmm. We're turning you loose. And then slowly we started getting that trust. And, and so what's funny is uh, in, in our industry, I was telling him, I covered a meeting for him in, uh, I think we were in DC when I covered major counties. Yeah. And I text him and there was all these experienced sheriffs in the room from big counties from around the country. And their focus was recruitment and retention, right? Mm -hmm. That's the huge focus in law enforcement. And so they're talking about recruitment and retention and they go on this tirade about beards and tattoos are going to be the downfall of law enforcement. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sitting there like this dude, yeah. tattoo showing beard. <laughs> and I'm sitting at the table with all these guys that are saying this. And so I text him. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, these guys are like on the attack here. And he's like, say something. I'm like, eh, I'm not an elected sheriff. So I don't, really don't feel like it's my place to yeah. confront another sheriff. I'll just, yeah. But finally there was a female sheriff that was like, uh, yeah, you guys are all wrong, uh, <laughs> respectfully. Yeah. And she said, you're totally focused on the wrong things. Like tattoos yeah. and beards are not the downfall. It's cultures. Mm -hmm. And, you That's know, it's how you treat your same people. Same as focusing on race. Right. Or right. Or like, it's the same thing. It's all about the character. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you this question, Sheriff. Why are you that America's sheriff who's so popular? Because there's so many <laughs> yeah. sheriffs out yeah, there. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you're so popular. You're all over the news. You're everywhere. Because we knocked down those walls. Yeah. Okay. What we there said early go. on is, so we had a guy named Sheriff Joe Arpaio. He was, oh, yeah. uh, you know, he was yeah. the America's toughest sheriff. Mm -hmm. And he was in that, he filled that void in Arizona for a long time. Yeah. So he lost. When I won, he lost. And mm -hmm. so there was a void all of a sudden for a person that would get on the news and speak to the news and we're not afraid to just say like truth is true yeah, like right. don't be ashamed of the truth it hurts sometimes and it's good sometimes but truth is jordan peterson has a great quote says you got to have faith in the redeeming power of truth mm -hmm. and you just got to let it go right and so we weren't afraid and so a live pd came to us with right after we took over oh, wow. said hey you want to do live pd i was like I'm, I'm like a baby deer on ice here man yeah, i don't right. even know <laughs> what i'm doing yet um, six months into it, yeah. I went to a training in Colorado and on, I said on the Saturday or Sunday or Monday, called Matt and I said, Hey, call those guys and see if they're still interested. Mm -hmm. Within, before I even got back from Colorado at the end of the week, they were filming at our agency by oh, Friday. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And <clears throat> so then they filmed. So we started getting popularity with live PD and yeah. then, and then we did at the same time, 60 days in, even though it didn't air for a while. Well, wait, 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 let's, let, let's, there's a little piece he's leaving out of live PD. Uh -oh. So after live PD is writing with us, right? They're writing, writing, writing. Yeah. Yeah. They start coming. Cause uh, I was kind of the checks and balances guy. Like I would say like, Hey, you guys are getting in the way too much or you need, you know, this or that. So mm -hmm. I was kind of the check and <laughs> check and balance guy. And they were like, Hey, so we notice like we're out filming all the time with your guys and the sheriff keeps showing up to scenes and we're like, yeah, he, he does that. He's out working the road on Fridays or Saturday nights. And they're like, yeah, no other sheriffs are doing that. Can we film with him? I said, you have to ask him. So 
That's how they ended up. They started. Yeah. So the, with the him. call wow. that precipitated that was it was we show up to this call is right at the end of the show. So this three hour show, and we're in this house and they're riding with them the other deputies, and we got this dude up there and it's a domestic situation. The guys yeah. up the stairs arguing with my guys and they're piss, they're to kind of just like patty caking with them and so I walk into the house and I step up the stairs and I reach up and grab him. And drag him down the stairs and out of the house onto the front porch. And they were like, who is that? Yeah, who's that guy? And here's the guy with the cowboy hat. Has to share. And yeah. so the next week they were riding with me. And, uh, and that kind of really started putting that in motion, American Sheriff. Yeah. American Sheriff was something I locked up for a charity. And then I, wasn't, I was Sheriff Lamb on Instagram and mm -hmm. on social media. And then somebody tried to bust me out for something for saying that I was violating, that I, sh I couldn't use Sheriff Lamb or that oh. it didn't made it so where I couldn't um, block people or delete comments or whatever. Mm. So I was like, I'm not changing. I, I was actually obstinate about it. Mm. And then finally the lawyer's like, oh, I think you probably should change because they could maybe sue you. And I go, yeah, screw it. You know what? I'll change it to American Sheriff. I own that company yeah. anyway. Yeah. And that's how it started. Well, cool man. That, that, is, that was the yeah. that was the nexus of it. But we did sixty days in. That's what I was gonna get to because sixty days in. That's what you did. I watched so many of those. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that one actually so, now it used to be everybody knew us for fa for um, Live PD. for Live PD, yeah. and then we did sixty days in, and then it aired on like a year later on um, A and E. Yeah, and then get into fast forward to COVID mm -hmm. and twenty twenty, yeah. and all of a sudden around. September, October of 2020, people started saying to me, hey, I saw you on Netflix. Okay. Well, I didn't do anything on Netflix. Days. Right, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> so I go home to Netflix and turn it, look at it, look at it, and sure enough, one of the top 10 shows is 60 Days In, season five, Huge. our season. Oh, wow. While everybody's home on lockdowns yeah. yep. and watching TV, and so now everybody knows us for 60 Days In. Yeah, well, that's, on, that's on awesome. The, on the 60 Day In note, too, um, all of this stuff you have to understand, like Live PD calculated, 60 days in calculated. And so when we did Live PD, that was a no brainer. Um, we kind of, you know, knew like this is going to, we think this is going to be good. It's going to be good to showcase our people, our county, our sheriff. Uh, and then 60 days in came to us and we were like, this is beautiful because the timing's great. We're showcasing our patrol deputies. Now we have the chance to showcase our detention officers who are a lot of times treated worse yeah. right mm -hmm. so in the industry they're looked at differently or treated differently so we said this is beautiful because we can show the work that our detention officers do and give a new appreciation to them because people just don't know because they don't get that inside view right. so we're like this is going to be the inside view and we actually uh, to their credit when they filmed with us they told us that we were going to have good rights on what's released and we told them we're good with most stuff just don't make our people look bad. If you yeah. do that, like we're out. No, right, and of they did a great job of, yeah. of yeah. not, yeah. That's and that was, the, yeah. and so that went really well. And I've always done interviews because I'm not afraid to stand up for the profession. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to stand up for America. I'm not afraid to stand up for common sense things. And they're, they're, frankly, as a sheriff, they can't fire you. Right. Like right. I, don't, I don't work you for the like governor. It. I don't mm. work for the president. I work yeah. for the people of my county. So as yeah. long as the people of my county are fine with mm -hmm. it, Let's go. I've all right, seen so. you a lot on the news. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. No, no, you're good, I've man. seen you on the news so many times. <laughs> so I watch politics stuff. Clint knows. I love that stuff. I just, mm -hmm. like, I'm following the election right now very closely. Mm -hmm. I just like it because I want to know what's going on. You know, yeah. a lot of people are just like sheep. They just don't pay attention. You know, I, I want to know the good, bad, ugly. Watched you a lot on the news. Fox News, oh, all yeah. over these uh, local uh, news, talking about border stuff. Yeah. and. Mm -hmm. I mean, every single thing, and I'm not saying because you're here, every single thing that you've said so far, I was like, man, why are we even arguing about this? That makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. And you know, most people don't argue with it. The, they want to <coughs> ignore it. Like, yeah. it's hard to argue when, they, when the guy comes out that's on the border and then just saying, hey, look, this is the problem. They don't really argue. The, the, sometimes the left, the more progressive channels will, um, they'll say, like, I came out recently and said, look, when they're processing them, they're giving them phones, they're giving them plane tickets to wherever they want to go, and they're giving them gift cards. Well, then the media scurried to try to, to, to debunk that. And then they came out and they said, oh, he's, he's, that's false. That's not really happening. 
the and fact, they, fact checkers. Yeah, the yeah, fact the checkers. Fact checkers. Yeah. So they do an interview and they said, well, Sheriff, they said that that's false. And I go, who said that? Like the 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 politicians in New York or DC, <laughs> right. like that's who said it. I go, my information comes from boots on the ground, border patrol agents. And since then I've had even more people say it. Mm-hmm. And it comes from my own two eyes. So I don't care what they fact check. They're wrong. They're lying. Because you're at the border, aren't you? Right. They're there. Yeah. So like right. most people will kowtow to the to the mob. Yeah. And if you're not willing, like if you stand strong, mm-hmm. they are not looking for hard targets. Yeah. They're looking for soft targets. Well, and even in uh, in 2020, we experienced, you know, because there's the whole anti-cop movement, right? Oh, yeah. And we experienced, uh, they started to try and flex on us, these, these progressive groups or the left or the BLM or whoever. Um, they would uh, do social media feeds where we're going to do this or that. And we were like, well, you might not want to try that here. And uh, we had a few that uh, tried to damage some of our, our cars at homes because hmm. uh, our guys have take home cars. Yeah. So we had cars damaged at home. So we went after those people relentlessly. And once we found out who they were, we locked them up yeah. and we told them, we're, like, we're not putting up with that shit. Yeah. And don't come to our county and do that. And, you yeah. know, we had some threats of we're going to come to your building. We're like, eh, it's going to be the wrong building. <laughs> it's going to be yeah. the wrong building. The come jail's right area. next door and you're going right. to be in it. <laughs> right, yeah. right. There's plenty of soft targets out there. And oh, so yeah. when you push back and once they realize you're not going to, you're not going to yeah. cower, they'll, yeah. they'll just pick up and move somewhere else where it's easier. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean. So, so is that why you decided to run for the U.S. Senate? Well, the country's jacked up. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know. that's, that was going to be one of my questions. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah. like, like, not not so much like why you're running, but because I because I, I think that's a that's a valid question, yeah. but that's a valid answer. You know, the yeah. country's jacked up, and I think you know you probably have some uh, some solutions or at least things that you think might work better than what's being done right now. Well, first of all, the nature of, of I'm a patriot first and foremost, yeah. but the oh, nature yeah. of our profession is when something's amiss, like if it's chaos and, and, and burning to the ground, uh, mm-hmm. we run towards it. Yeah. We don't shy away from it. And so there's a Danish, when my, uh, people said, you gotta, you gotta run for Senate. And I said to my wife, I said, look, if w- they're just gonna keep asking. We gotta come up with some reasons why not to do this. Mm-hmm. And in that process, we started feeling very compelled to do it. Mm. And then uh, we had a tragedy in our family. I lost my son. 22 year old son, my 11 month old granddaughter, my daughter in law, oh in a car God. accident in December of 2022. And honestly, it just, we weren't interested in doing anything. No, I, and I, I can understand that. It sucked. I, and so yeah. uh, I wasn't interested in running for Senate, Sheriff, none no. of that. Um, but then about three, four weeks after the, they died, about three weeks, somebody said something and it just kind of sparked in me. And it just reminded my wife and I looked at each other and we felt like just a, a looking at each other, we knew this is yeah. what we had to do. Right. Because there is no guarantee for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And the only thing we take with us is what we do in this life. Mm. And there's a Danish saying that says, whoever has the ability has the responsibility. And so we felt that the ability on the border, the border is the number one issue. It was the number one issue in the Iowa caucus. It's the number one issue in Arizona. It's the number one issue wherever I go. Mm -hmm. The economy, um, crime, and national security are the four top issues no matter where you go. And so who are you going to find that has more experience dealing with the border issues, firsthand knowledge, going down there, what it's going to take, the fortitude that's going to take to fix this problem? You're not going to find that. No. Um, uh, Budget. Look, we've, you know, we've, took over a budget that was really jacked up and we put it in, we got it all in line and within a couple of years and with good, uh, these guys do a really good job. Um, we've stayed within budget and we balance our budget, 60 million to hundred million. You're not going to find a candidate that has run an agency of over 600 employees with a budget that size. So there's the economic piece. I've testified down at the Congress uh, in Washington. I've testified at our state house on behalf of bills, killing bills. Um, then you talk crime. We have mm-hmm. successfully reduced our crime index year after year in a country where crime was on the rise. Mm-hmm. And then national security, which is really intertwined with border security right it now. Is. And I know we can get into that, but when we looked at those four issues, what kind of man would I be if I stood there knowing right. I had the ability and didn't do anything about it? Right. And so you, and you, so, you get that calling, you know, you get that. The, and, yeah. and, and then so it, it makes complete sense, you know. And speaking of sense, going back to something you said earlier, you said you, you want to, you know, do things that make 
make common sense, right? right. And, yeah. and of course, and when we hear that, I'm sure the comment section light up real quick, and that doesn't <laughs> include common sense gun laws, right? <laughs> no, definitely does not. <laughs> Look, do not give an inch yeah. on the Second Amendment. No. All right, and you know that was a that was a follow up question because you know I've heard both sides come from law enforcement, where some there some might say you know I feel safer if guns weren't on the street type of thing, yeah. right? And others were saying an armed populace is a safe populace, mm -hmm. and so that was going to be a question I had for you guys, and you just answered that I think. But for both of you, I would like your take on that. You know, the Second Amendment. Wh what do y'all think coming from law enforcement, seeing the issue at the border? You know, what do y'all think? Well, first of all, gun is a gun is an inanimate object. That's right. To blame an inanimate object for a violent crime, mm -hmm. I, any person that is, has any logic amongst hmm. themselves would have a tough time saying that inanimate object cannot get up by itself and hurt somebody. Right. It takes somebody with whether bad intentions or mental health issues, or in a good case, where somebody with good intentions stops somebody with bad intentions. Yeah. But it takes somebody to use it. That was gonna a be a follow up there. It was like, hey, it, even to be used correctly and in a right manner, it takes somebody. It takes somebody. Yeah. I could leave a gun on this count this table for a hundred years. If nobody touches it, the gun will never harm a soul. Right. So guns isn't the problem. Mm. So the only people that are affected by gun laws are law-abiding citizens. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So you will, you will create more victims. You will, first of all, the biggest, you're violating their constitutional right. right. Yeah. And let's take the guns out of it, okay? Let's make it an unemotional issue because mm -hmm. when you talk guns, people immediately get oh, emotional. Yeah. So right. let's, let's take the emotion out of it and say it's not about a gun. Take it out. Mm -hmm. It's an amendment to the Constitution. I wouldn't let you change the First Amendment, the Second, the Third, the Fourth, yeah. the Fifth, the Sixth, the Seventh. I wouldn't let you change any of them. It has nothing to do with the guns. It has to do with the amendment. That's right. Now, I also like the gun part, too. <laughs> right. So take the Second Amendment. Um, if you allow them to change it, don't think they won't change the first. The Pretty snowball. soon you can only go to church once a month. Right. Maybe you can only speak freely on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Maybe the press can only put out their, uh, the, uh, a paper on Sundays. Mm -hmm. You don't think that that's not out of the question. And the only thing keeping it all intact is the Second Amendment. Yeah. But it's still just an amendment to the Constitution. So we are very pro Second Amendment in our agency. I ask people when I pull them over, I'm like, hey, you got any guns in the car? Mm -hmm. No. I'm like, why not? You should. <laughs> it's dangerous out there. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, dangerous it's dangerous out, dangerous out there. Yeah. Yeah. So there are cops, and a lot of those cops live in fear sometimes. Right. I mean, I can what if what any situation I want. Yeah. But here's the bottom line. If you're prepared, you shouldn't be afraid. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't, you cannot have safety and security and freedom at the same time. That's right. They yeah. do somewhat intersect. But if you push too hard for too much safety and security, freedom goes the other way. Mm -hmm. And you will ultimately, one or the other will prevail. And we're getting to a place in this country where people are now saying, crap, safety and security or freedom. Mm -hmm. But the divide is much greater now. But and so what was that quote from Thomas Jefferson? I think it was right. The liberty and safety quote. You know, you guys know what I'm talking oh, about. I know yeah. which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Do you prefer dangerous freedom or yeah. peaceful yeah, slavery? Yeah. Neither. And Thomas yeah. Paine has a good one too, yeah. where he says the greatest tyrannies are always perpetrated in the name of the noblest causes. Mm -hmm. They that make you good. feel good about it because COVID you need to get the shot right. because it's, yeah. you should do it for other people. Yeah. Right. No, it's my freedom. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sorry. Some guy asked me, well, when would you do the lockdowns? Never. When? Yeah, 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 yeah. like, what do you mean when? <laughs> he said, what point do you think lockdowns are appropriate? And I said, yeah. never. Never. No. Because we live in a free society. Here's mm -hmm. the thing. If you are scared, you are welcome to stay in your home. That's right. That's right. If you are, th but you cannot impede on somebody else's freedom because you feel like you want a certain level of safety and security. We have given way too much safety and security mm. in this country. Oh, for sure. And now we're losing our freedom. I mean, the ripple mm. effect of that, those lockdowns is not our topic. I'm not going to go into it, but <laughs> ripple effect of it. Like, yeah, you try to save, of course, nobody wants to lose lives, right? You try to save so many lives, but the ripple effect costs you a lot more. Yeah. Oh, like for sure. The economy, you know, the but they weren't even rate. saving lives. And yeah. I know this they, isn't the topic because I, I want to give Matt a chance to talk yeah. about the guns, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. they weren't saving lives because I we were we are in this job. Yeah. We never went to pull anybody out of a house that died from COVID. Mm -hmm. Everybody that died from COVID died in a hospital. Yeah. Mm. Supposedly under the care of, of them. When they use things isn't that crazy. Yeah. yeah. So who killed? Like who, what was it COVID that killed them? Yeah. Or because they weren't dying in the home, 
That's we weren't pulling them out that of the house. Yeah, that is actually that. You know, I never really thought I, of that. I never thought no, about that's, that. That's, too. A, that's so a great take. Never from home. Yeah. But they're all at the hospital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll tell you this. Unfortunately, the federal government mandated us to take it when I was uh, doing it. So I took two it's been of those. Good knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> You've been a good man. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I was just fine, and I was around people all the time because of my work. I took the uh, vaccine. 12 hours later, the effect of the vaccine, I was terribly sick. That went over two weeks after that, I got my first COVID. Then another month went by, I got another COVID. <laughs> I was like, dude, I was just doing fine. <laughs> I didn't have anything. And yeah, now right. suddenly I got yeah. COVID twice. Right. right. Yeah. So anyway. Well, back I know up. that's a whole nother, but whole it, nother yeah. yeah. I want to yeah. yeah. give Matt a chance to talk about the guns. Here, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, no, this, this, and this is how our podcasts go, man. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to bounce around all over the place, and that's, that's a lot of fun. But we'll talk about the guns a little bit more here, and then we're going to talk about how necessary they might become if this, if this southern border remains as uh, compromised as it is. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, give us, give us your spill yeah. on it, man. Uh, well, what he said, yeah. <laughs> you, like, you like guns and stuff too right bro yeah yeah, yeah. so uh i mean for me i've grown up with guns i've yeah. been around guns my whole life our, my family's hunted our whole life and um what i see uh, we don't have a gun problem in this country we have mm. a degradation of our society mm. and yes. we have a breakdown of family and family values and yes. we have a breakdown of um respect for the rule of law and all of those things are causing our issues. And right. like the sheriff said, the guns are an inanimate object. That's just a tool for somebody to use violence, just like a knife is, just like a pipe or a hammer or, you know, whatever they're going to use as their tool of the trade to uh, to use violence on somebody. Mm-hmm. The gun just becomes that tool. Um, but what I do know, as, as to his point, without the second, we lose the first. We lose the third. We That's lose a snowball the fourth. Effect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And mm-hmm. so... That is the one thing. Our forefathers were brilliant in in their design of this piece of paper that has kept our country together. But unfortunately, we have uh, people who refer to themselves as leaders in our country Mm -hmm. that are allowing outside forces to undermine everything that our country stands for. Uh, And that is the real problem that we need to Mm -hmm. focus on. The guns are not the thing. And you can see that people are uneasy throughout this country by the gun sales. It's not, I, I mean, gun guys are always going to buy guns, right. but you go look at who's buying guns now. Oh, yeah. It's people that have never thought about yeah. that before because they're concerned for their safety. They're concerned of what's going on at the border, who's mm-hmm. being let into the country. I mean, we just had one the other day where the guy said, they were like, hey, who are you? And he's like, America's going to know who I am. Oh, great. And <laughs> they identified him a couple of days later terrorist imagine that who imagine is that. at our open border on the southern end mm. they know how to get here and here's the thing i'm married to a mexican mm. and she's first generation american her mom immigrated here came here illegally mm. and then went through the process and got her legal citizenship yeah good for her um it's we understand the families that are coming here for the right reasons that are mm. trying to get away from violence mm. that are trying to get away from bad situations america has never stopped those people Right. We've always let those people in. What we're trying to control are the criminal elements that exploit mm-hmm. all of this. Oh, and that's right. what's happening. You have, whether <laughs> whether people understand it or it's going to be admitted to, you have a criminal element, i.e. cartels, who control both sides of the border. And they are running humans right now. And oh, yeah. humans are the commodity. Um, and they are they don't care who those humans are. And so the other criminal element from countries of interest who want to kill Americans, they are exploiting that whole process and getting mm-hmm. their people in place. Right. And, and so they're trying to do all of this stuff. And so we have all of these criminals that want to hurt America and Americans. And so it is more important than ever that Americans be have the ability to protect themselves, right. their families, and their country when it comes down to it. Yeah, it's 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 the point of remaining vigilant and aware. And by doing so, it, you're absolutely right. People are waking up and saying, you know what? I need a gun. And what's awesome is now we're, I mean, we, we run a YouTube channel. We see the analytics right. and we can see also different, different demographics that follow us on Instagram and everything else. And we're starting to see these, these shifts, yep. which is awesome. And, and I want to bridge that gap too. So I invite everybody on this podcast, you know, I don't care, you know, what you look like or anything else like that. If you're willing to exercise your second amendment, right. And protect yourself. And you want that for everybody else in this country, then hell yeah, you're, you're, you're an ally. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yep. The ally that I, the, the, the type of ally that we all want, 
you know, yeah. and because and when it comes down to it, when bad stuff happens, yeah, and uh, we've talked about this, we've both done nine eleven speeches, right, mm-hmm. where we get invited to schools and stuff like that, um, and and one of the ones that I did a couple of years ago, uh, it was it was at a, a school that's very close to me. And uh, I told all the, they said, well, we just want you to deliver a message to the kids on, cause you were working that day. Like you were a cop yeah. and you were on the street and what was it like for you? And I said, the one thing I know is this kids, look to your left, look to your right. There's people in this crowd that your family has less money than the family next to you. There's skin color differences between all of you. None of that mattered right. on that day, right? We were all Americans. We all got attacked. We all had to band together to fight who was coming after us. When you think about, you know, and this is, this is a quote, phrase, whatever, that's been passed around for a long time. You think about September 11th and the tragedy that that was, but then you think about the unification and what this September America, what 12th. this country saw on September yeah. 12th. And it, I, I'm getting chills thinking about it now because nobody cared what anybody looked at. I saw right. American flags everywhere. I saw American yeah. flags being used as blankets because that's what they had available to, yeah. to keep somebody warm as they're injured from the from debris and concrete and things like that. And and that's something, you know, I think we've gotten away from it. You know, yeah. I've gotten so far away from it. The division is here. It's unfortunate, but it, but it's present, you know. And going back to the, the border uh, discussion too, I was listening to the Sean Ryan podcast, the Sean Ryan show, yeah. excellent stuff. He had the Ascari media, I can't remember the exact name on it, but a woman there that's what was previous CIA or something, she did all sorts of cool stuff. And it's like, hey, are there terrorists coming through <laughs> the southern border? And she says unequivocally, yes. Well, how yeah. do you know that? And she goes, because we know that. Like, like I, I think you know I yeah. mean you're, you, so it's I like, don't even know how somebody could honestly even ask that question yeah. how yeah, that? how do you know that yeah there are they're admitting it's eight to nine million people mm-hmm. we think it's more like twelve to fifteen million people that have come across the border honestly you have to be almost dumb mm-hmm. to think that nobody was that came across in twelve million people yeah in an open border where yeah. our enemies see that we are exposed yeah. It was not a terrorist, right? Now, now, not, now, I'm not cracking on Sean Ryan here because he was saying like, like, how do you know? Because obviously, I know, but got, I, and right, not even because right. I love Sean Ryan, right, and right. I'm just talking because we get those questions too. So, okay, but people will say like, how do you know? And I'm like, yeah. how do I know? Like, dude, come yeah. on, you know, Sean is, is doing a podcast, so he's right. asking, yeah. he's asking, exactly. So please, Sean, I love you. <laughs> <He's> great show. <laughs> right. Yeah, we just no. were with Christian Craighead. And, <laughs> oh, dude, that's yeah, cool. That was a great show. That's another. That's talk about you know getting up and doing something. I mean, he sees you and talking about running into the gunfire. Right. That's some badass shit yeah. there. And he and was like, hey, I'm doing it. He's such a humble and cool guy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, great, great episode too. But yeah, man, I mean, so it's, so it's a known fact that these threats are entering through this compromised border of mm-hmm. ours. And honestly, and, and then on top of that, the Supreme Court yesterday, mm-hmm. yesterday said, yeah, Border Patrol needs to tear down these razor wire fences. So what did the governor say? Okay, you tear him down. We're going to put him right back up. Yeah. You know, so now it says sudden, that he didn't say that he couldn't put it up. Right. You know, and yeah. so and this is the governor that's that's again, he's there. Right. He, this is this is a present issue in his state. And he's got the National Guard doing what the National Guard needs to be doing at this point here. And I mean, it's I, in the name. And do when you look at <laughs> so, it, if you just look at it logically too, in in what realm should a country be fighting one of its own states and and saying no, you can't protect yourself. Like that, yeah, what that, is this? This is yeah, nonsense. Well, I want right. to know this, though. Uh, and I don't know really anything about this ruling. It just happened yesterday. Normally, the Supreme Court is pretty good at articulating. I thought you said you watch the news. Dude. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 You got me pretty good. I happen to be a uh, we, we might be a little bit right? yeah. 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 Yeah, My phone wipes. tells you. Yeah. Yeah. Shot show yeah. wipes your hard drive, dude. Good one, though. So, normally, the Supreme Court articulates everything pretty well. Yeah. So... What was the reason? Did you read the? Uh, I don't ruling think on that? Dude, I don't think we have the opinions yet, dude. They, no, they didn't really. I think we just have the ruling, stuff, not yeah. the just opinion. Like, like, yeah. dude, this is this is fresh off the press. Yeah. I am yeah. curious. What is the opinion on this one? Why? Well, it's going to probably go back to what we dealt with in from SB ten seventy in the Ninth what, Circuit. What so, was that? in Arizona, they passed a law. I think it was in 2010, 2011. They passed a law, which was called SB ten seventy, which would make it illegal. So right now, it's only illegally federally. To be in the country illegally, to come in the country illegally is only a federal crime. So Arizona said, well, we're going to make it a state state crime. Mm -hmm. So if you're here in the country or providing aid to any of these people, 
you're going to be held accountable and for. It, mm. Real quick, just to give people a, a perspective on that. Why they did that was because at the time when we would stop a carload of illegals, we would have 20 people in there from 20 different countries and they would tell you, no, I'm, I'm not from this country. I'm here illegally. We didn't have the authority to detain them, That's really. Right, yeah. We would have to call Border Patrol and say, hey, we have 20 illegals. Can you come get them and do you want them? And if Border Patrol said no, then it was bienvenidos, estados unidos, and you're <laughs> out of here. And we would release them, <laughs> wow. and they Same. would go yeah, into the no. U.S. And so the state was attempting to give us authority to be able to hold them, take them to our county jail, so that Border Patrol th could then process them from there. Wow. And so what they yeah. did was the Obama administration immediately challenged it, much like they do yeah. now. Anytime mm -hmm. you try to do something, boom, yeah. they challenge yeah. it. It's like he's back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 3.0. Like, like, is there like little puppet yeah. strings yeah. up here yeah. somewhere? Yeah. yeah. But it's more like Weekend at Bernie's. Yeah. 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 It's not like puppet <laughs> strings. It's more like. We can, yeah. Uh, yeah, we yeah. can buy that. Sorry. I, I got yeah. totally yeah. off track. That's good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, they took it to the Ninth Circuit, and the Ninth Circuit ruled saying basically that immigration, naturalization, any of those things, ironically, I don't think they talk about border security. They talk about immigration, naturalization, those things were a federal issue mm -hmm. and a federal issue alone. So basically killing that law that we had put in place. Yeah. The I think the contesting, what Texas needs to fight all the way is basically saying, where do the federal government's responsibilities end when they fail to do them? And where do the states who are also in ch uh, charged with protecting their citizens, mm -hmm. but how I, do you? But I feel like you can easily share, uh, easily articulate and show yeah. that state is greatly affected yeah. by the actions of illegal immigration. Well, and here's another thing that people need to look at when, when you're looking at this problem and you talk about illegal immigration and people would say, well, why do the states need to do that? You know, let the border patrol do that. Let, mm. let Homeland Security yeah. do that. Mm. Okay, cool. Let's go with that premise. And now let's look back at, let's say the FBI and bank robbery. All right. was only a why federal crime. Me? I, I'm just, okay. no, I wasn't. It, it was my hand. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I felt like FBI was over here somewhere. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> but, <laughs> but the FBI and bank robbery, right? The right. states didn't have the authority to stop, detain, arrest, for bank robbery because it was a federal crime yeah, but then states point. started putting their own laws on the books right. because the fbi was like hey we need help with this yeah. right can't and be then everywhere all at once. let's talk yeah. about the dea and drugs mm. federal crime until the states put laws on their yeah. books to deal with counterfeit that's I mean, all okay by the yeah. feds like the right. feds don't have a problem with that they don't have a problem with us prosecuting bank robbers when that's a federal crime mm. yeah. they don't have a problem with uh, with us putting drug laws on the books federal crime yeah, right why is immigration a problem yeah. yeah that's that's an interesting take too has that gone to the supreme court at all no the no. so no and yeah. i think that arizona should have pushed it to the supreme court okay. um but they didn't and so now it's kind of sat dormant for a long mm -hmm. time and now texas is saying hey this is what we're going to do which basically is kind of like the sb 1070 Got it. um they say there's a couple differences and i think they probably learned some things yeah. But I think this is an argument that's been needing to ha be had for a while. So I'm glad to see it's popping up. And I love to see that Texas is just doing it until this is what they do. Yeah. They just do it until the courts tell them don't do it anymore. Yeah. Right. And they just, the Constitution be damned, they just do it. Mm -hmm. And I like that Texas is basically saying, look, we're within what we think is our constitutional rights to protect our citizens from an invasion right. because you're not doing it. Yeah. Right. Not you, but so, huh? <laughs> <laughs> not the FBI. Yeah. Not the FBI. <laughs> I don't, I don't but the FBI, one thing about the FBI, one a point going back to the people coming into this country, terrorists, all that. Mm -hmm. I was talking to the FBI, the guy the other day, and he says, look, we're pretty on top of the people that are on the terrorist watch list. Kind of know Mexico will call us and say, Hey, look, we had another terrorist try to come across. What do you want us to do with them? But, what he said, he goes, I'm, not, I'm more concerned about the secondary and tertiary people. Right. Yeah. To put it into perspective, you take a, a biker gang. Mm. The biker gangs will have patch members, prospects, yeah. and then hang arounds. Hang yeah. Yeah. And so what this is like is basically your patch members stop doing a lot of the, the really work on the ground. Someone's got to prove themselves. Right. And so a lot of that work is being done by the prospects and the hang arounds, the mm -hmm. secondaries and the tertiaries. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that is what is concerning because they're the ones that are willing to put in the work. They're the ones prove that the themselves. cartels can know they can get across yeah. without hitting no. the, the, car, the uh, terrorist mm -hmm. watch list. Yeah. 
And so Those that is what's concerned. Wolves, that right. So yeah. what is the solution, Sheriff Lamb? What, what do you do down there? What so the quick good, good yeah. senators. Yeah, we got to get <laughs> Sheriff Lamb <laughs> in the Senate, first of all. That's yeah. a big yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, approved. That's right. <laughs> got to get this presidency out of there. Anyway, yeah, that. Uh, yes. Got to impeach yeah. uh, Mayorkas. Yeah. Uh, those right. are things that you can do. But yeah. what you have to do is you have to restore the Trump era policies. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the Trump era policies were working. So one thing is finish the wall. But yeah. two of the most important things that you need to start off with is you have to hold people accountable. Yeah. If you come across and you break the law, charge them, mm -hmm. put them in a facility and send them back because they broke the law. It's title eight violation. Number two, you need the remain in Mexico pro that policy. Was huge. That is one huge. of the biggest ones because everybody right now and the cartel coaches them up, they make a false asylum claim. Mm -hmm. Now, very, almost hardly any, I would say none of the, the claims of the people crossing from Mexico into America are legit asylum claims. And you might say, well, well Sheriff, yeah. that's a bold statement. Here's how I know they're, all not, they're not legit. Because you have to claim asylum in the first country you get to uh, when you come to true. so if so they're the traveling all the way from venezuela all the way up mm -hmm. and yeah, and right. people from mexico don't qualify because they are not seen as a, a country that is being persecuted politically or religiously so mexicans can't come across and claim asylum so the other anybody else that came to that country yeah. to walk across our border mm -hmm. is has gone against what the rule is for the more countries first they country. went through the more they violated that. So rule. they should uh, have seek asylum in Mexico first. Or Ecuador or Brazil or whatever, or whatever yeah, you came into. First, yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. But we're just letting them in. Yeah. And now we're saying, okay, we're going to give you a court date for five to seven years from now. <laughs> and you five promised to seven years. Yeah, to five to seven yeah. years. Good luck yeah. finding them then. And <laughs> in that five to seven years, yeah. we now, they're going to go to court if they show up. They're not going to show up. Yeah. But if they show up, the judge is going to rule that they don't have legitimate asylum claims because most people are not making legitimate asylum yeah, claims. Right. Above and beyond, not claiming it in the first country you get to, beyond that, 90% of the asylum claims always are proved out to be false, you know, not legitimate right, yeah. asylum claims. So, I mean, we got a real problem on our hands and it's gonna be a hard thing to fix. So the way you do it is remain in Mexico, hold people accountable, and let's get Border Patrol agents doing their job again as opposed to, you know, being babysitters and making mm. sandwich for, for people that broke the law. Right. And if you want to, because uh, uh, there's, people don't have the education on it first, right? And so that's what this is designed to do to kind of talk them through some of this stuff. But uh, everybody has different things that they believe, causes they believe in, or, or what they can get behind. So we try to hit this from several different angles. We're giving you kind of a law enforcement perspective, right? This is why we should enforce these laws. This is why we should, um, keep the rule of law in place and, and things we could do. But you also have to look at the humanitarian piece of this and right. what's going on down there at the border. And uh, I'll, the sheriff speaks well about the, the kids, but I'm going to uh, tell you the, the rape story real quick mm. um, because that one is one that hits home. So you, if people don't understand what's going on down there, we stopped a woman, um, our air unit did. Um, mm. And by stopped, I mean she's in the middle of nowhere desert and our air unit helped intercept a group. So they're talking to the group, this particular woman, she's a young woman, I think she was in her yeah. young 20s. Um, she has a bag of pills, which they think are you know, like fentanyl or something like that. Okay. So they're asking her, hey, what are these pills? And she says, well, those are morning after pills because all of us women know that we're gonna be raped eight to 10 times on the trip up. Jesus. So as we cross through Mexico into the US, we're gonna get raped and eight to 10 times by the coyotes, by the other males in the group, all of that stuff. And so I carry these so that I don't end up pregnant through one of those rapes. So where are the people at that care about that? Yeah. Right. Where, where's the Me Too movement? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, asleep. Jesus. I mean, our moral compass oh. is broken because oh, we put politics in front of people now. And I hear the left and I hear the CNN and I hear all these places saying, well, it's the humane thing to do to have an open border. What, the what is humane about it? Right. Women are being raped. Children are being raped and used as pawns and, and trafficked into America. Yeah. And the, our own government admits they know that there's 85,000, which I think the number's probably over 100,000 plus sure. kids who they know, know they don't know where they're yeah. at. Of course. They're in the sex trade. They're in the workforce. Um, so real quick, though, Sheriff, hit on that one. Because to me, that, that's a huge one that people just kind of glaze over. 85,000 kids. And so our own government says 
we have encountered 85,000 kids who had no adult from their family with them. And the number's actually 150,000 a year. Mm -hmm. They're but, admitting wow. they don't know where 85,000 are. So 185,000 come in. So the reason you say, well, where's CPS and where's DCS or whatever, Child Protected Services or sure. whatever the yeah. DCS means. Um, but what happens is, is when you don't belong to America, CPS and DCS don't get involved. Mm. And so what they should be doing is contacting the country these kids came from and saying, we have a kid for you, you need to come get them. And then they are protected, their child services would take over. Right. But what our government is doing is the OGA is saying, okay, we'll take these kids and we'll try to find their, their families here in America. The OGA had to testify in Congress that they don't know where, and this was months ago, that they don't know where 85,000 children of the ones that they're taking in every year come from. Now mm. they're gonna tell you, oh, that, that they're, they're separating children. No, the majority of these kids don't belong to those people. The cartels right. are, are using them as pawns and they give them an address and all the kids will have the same addresses. Mm. Everybody lives together in a, in a place in Chicago. Yeah. Or, so it is a complete disaster. And I mean, I don't know how much time we, what time? No, go at it. Oh, yeah, go, go for it. Go, no, go, the, honestly, uh, go for it. Yeah. Look, the NICMIC, yeah. so if you don't think that the children are being enslaved in the sex trade in America, then you're kidding yourself. Oh, absolutely. Because the um, um, NICMIC, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, mm -hmm. in 2014, we had 4 million cases of CSAM, which is child sexual abuse material. So child sexual abuse material is gonna be a picture of a child naked or a picture or a video of a child being raped. Mm. That's what CSAM is. Wow. So in 2014, we had 4 million cases of CSAM in America. In 2022, we had 32 million cases Jesus. of CSAM. Wow. Less than 10 years. Yeah. That's submitted known. to the NICMIC. Remember, that's known. That's known. That's, known. Exactly. that's what's being reported to NICMIC. And wow. so those numbers coincide with the increase of children showing up at our borders as well. Mm -hmm. What's so humane about that? There's what nothing humane about right. it. Well, and uh, there's nothing humane about leaving people in the desert for dead. There's nothing humane about uh, extorting about the ones that are dying men. in shipping yeah. containers and things like that. There's and, nothing yeah. humane about. Um, affecting American lives who die from fentanyl poisonings because of Dude. drugs that come across the border. Yeah. There is no piece of it that is humane. If you want to come to this country to make a better life for yourself, which you agree with, you do, I've you do, it. I yeah. do. Yeah. 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 Look, I agree. <laughs> yeah. There is a process in place, yeah. and that's all we're saying. We need you to follow the process because when you don't, lives are put at risk. American lives, Guatemalan lives, right. Mexican lives, African lives, human all the lives. Human, yeah. human life human is life. being put. Children are being exploited. Women are being raped. Well, and, and here's I'll give you some another piece here, just because I want to I want to cover a broad stroke with this whole thing. So we've talked about the law piece, right? There's there's the the piece that this is actually a crime and it's illegal. Um, so that's for those folks. Then you have the humanitarian piece that we dove into. That's mm -hmm. for those folks. You come down to Arizona and see the environmental damage that has been done oh, by these yeah. groups. There's the environmental piece for those people out there that are concerned about yeah. the environment. Then you talk about the infrastructure of our country and how that can survive. And, and people who pay taxes mm -hmm. should understand this because if you haven't noticed, more and more is coming out of your check. Uh, every time you get a paycheck, yeah. more and more taxes are coming out. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to things like hospitals, schools, stuff that is supporting humans, right. And when you have humans that aren't contributing to the system, but are taking from that system, that system is not going to sustain, yeah. right? And Jeez. so you have all of these different things going on within this one problem that they lump it all into illegal immigration. Yeah. They evoke emotion out of it because how dare you keep people yeah. that need help from getting help because that's not what America is about. Right. We're not, but we're also about rule of law. Yeah. We're also about yeah. maintaining our own country. Mm -hmm. And you know, you have to look at all of this stuff and you can't just lump it all into illegal immigration and uh, just say that, you know, if you're against that, you're racist or whatever is you want right. to throw on there. Yeah. yeah. Right. How eye opening is and that though? You know, the taxes, let's talk the oh, economy. God, when yeah. Trump was trying to pass the, his, when he first came into office, he said, I want a $5 billion to build a wall and to get more border patrol agents. It was a whole border package. Yeah. 
and Congress was balking at it. At that time, they estimated that we were losing $132 billion in last tax revenue from people who were here in this country illegally failing to pay taxes. Hmm. They, also est- they also know that the money they make, those millions of dollars, if they, if they owed the $132 billion in taxes, how, much bill- how many billions were they making uh, yeah. that they sent back to their countries that they came from that left a giant hole in our economy? Yeah. That was six years ago, right. seven years ago. We are now have let eight to 10, 12,000 more people into this country who are now making money, likely not paying taxes, almost positive, you know, majority not paying taxes, sending this money out in an economy that is already struggling and on the verge of really having some real major issues, a recession. We are still, think about the damage that is doing to our economy. And then also look at when people look at this whole problem, because we're going to give them all kinds of tidbits to go back and research. Look at remittances, remittances back to Mexico from the U S I think it's still number two of U S yeah. Yeah. Wow. Of the uh, Mexico economy. So, so people coming to America, making money and sending that money back to another country Mm. is that country's uh, second highest form of, revenue coming into the country. If you were to read Sun Tzu's Art of War, and if you were to, if you were a tactician Mm -hmm. and you wanted to take over a country or destroy a country and you were patient, you could, I would drug the country with fentanyl like Mm -hmm. they do. Um, I would break the economy. I would do things. I would put troops in Right mixed in with all of the other yeah. people. All right. Was Sun Tzu and Chinese? Yeah, he was. <laughs> he knew. Mm, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The irony. But the, the, and you'd also tactician, break down the family values, too. Break down break the family down, values. Let society attack family. Re-educate right. children. Right. Like, people wearing Che Guevara shirts mm. around. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The guy was a murderer. Yeah. He was a... He murdered, you know... Um, and it, Aborigines, natives, they, yeah. they, he, was, he was a horrible person. Yeah. And yet you see people wearing that around. As if, as if you see so now people yeah. saying, well, you know, uh, Osama bin Laden, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I've no, heard no, people like, recently. What? They're trying to come back and sympathize and defend him right. now. You hear <laughs> people now Jesus. not rebuking, college professors not rebuking the atrocities that happened in Israel. Yeah. How are the, I mean, so that's. That's the other thing, too. I mean, hell, Kaya just had yeah. Orin Julie on. I actually you know? did have Orin Julie. She's an IDF soldier influencer. Oh, man. I bet She's you all over uh, Fox News, yeah. CNN, all over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pretty popular over there and even here. I just had her right before you guys. And, yeah, you guys should watch that. She, yeah. she, oh, yeah. she talked. I mean, oh, we had man. a brief conversation yeah. at, the, at the Gundy's, yeah. and, you know, which, is, which is a fun event and stuff like that. But this is something that's truly affecting this woman. Mm-hmm. And it's obviously affecting an entire nation. And now it's getting to the point where it's affecting the world, right? right? And, and you can see when she talks this little bit about the atrocities that took place on October 7th and how they're still, and they're still going on today. Yeah. You know, yeah. And this is, this is no small ordeal. Well, right? and the problem is for America is... We, if, if you look at history and you really look at history, we've consistently left our allies high and dry in situations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can't afford to do that because our allies are our allies for a reason, right? And uh, this, this Israel thing is huge. Israel is one of our strongest allies. Mm-hmm. And, uh, dude, it's just I, it's horrible. And you talk to any IDF soldiers um, that were either on the ground or have left that realm yeah. but have people still there and it like you you just can't put into words how horrific that day was and, and right. the stuff that went on there and i mean we saw because of how social media works and you see snippets of this stuff um but we've i think as a society in general like the world has become so inoculated to violence and to vile behavior that it's just a 10 second reel and they're flipping to the next thing, right? Yeah. And the United States is such a you know powerful country, right. the superpower. <laughs> um, well, I mean, really, if you think about it, under Trump administration, I'm not saying, oh, support Trump or this, right. this, any of that stuff, just common sense stuff. Yeah. Why Iran wasn't doing some of the stuff that they're mm-hmm. doing right now. Because they knew better. I don't know, it was, mm-hmm. would Hamas really attack right. if, uh, 
trouble well, because that. because predators yeah. understand yeah. that when they face a person that's willing to stand toe to toe with yeah. them, they don't want that. Would Putin and attack Ukraine? I don't like you like guys. If I walk in an um, elementary school yeah. with a kid that's being bullied. Do you think anybody's going to bully him that day? Right. Yeah. No. Right. And Trump so. was that guy. Whether you like him or not, it was clear yeah. that everybody kept, he kept everybody at bay, which is really the, the the role of government. That's what I'm saying. The United States, the role of United States in the world stage. I understand we're not perfect, but is that like is so yeah. such huge influence yeah. on the rest of the world? And under Trump administration, I know a lot of people can't stand him. Uh, he, he he kept thing he kept peace. Yeah, he thought right. he was going to start wars. There were yeah, no wars Abraham on the you know? Cuz right. your friends yeah. have to re respect you and yeah. your enemies have to fear you if right. you yeah. are going to run a country. To, to piggyback off of that just a little bit though. I, I you guys may have seen on social media there's an interview with a with a pedophile mm -hmm. and they said what did he look for? How would he choose his next victim? And the interviewer asked, you know, it was like, you know, did, how did you, you know, that, that was the question essentially. Right. Yeah. And he said it's not so much the victim I would look at, it would be the father. Mm -hmm. If the father seemed like this dude was a vigilant, like a man, like the, like a masculine, he's like, I'm not going to fuck with that kid. Yeah. He's like, but if there was no father or if the father was just on his phone or just, you know, neglecting his, his wife or fiance or significant other neglecting the kid and just doing his own thing, not caring, he's like easy target. Yeah. You know, so I can understand there's that, that's a very close yeah. and small resemblance. But you see they're predators and evil exists. Mm -hmm. And we got to be aware of it and how are you going to fight it? Well, and, right. and we know, and you know, the sheriff, like he uh, told you in the beginning, he was a gang cop for years. And mm -hmm. we know that from gangsters, right? Yeah. From dealing with gangs. When a gang takes a foothold in a neighborhood, if we don't address that immediately and hard, mm -hmm. they are going to gain ground and right. they're going to keep spreading and spreading and spreading. But when we come at them hard and tell them we're not going to stand for that, not here, yeah. they'll take it elsewhere. And mm -hmm. that's a, it's a worldwide gang problem right, right. We, we just have all these gangs all over the world yeah. and on a grand scale the u.s is the world police that right. has to step in and say no not happening yeah and people yeah, who can't stand that the u.s is the world police i understand there's a controversial opinion on that one somebody has to be right i mean somebody has to be who right. would you rather ccp yeah russia yeah. Like somebody has to be right out of everybody who do you would you rather to be the uh, world police yeah. united yeah. states well, and, and with the, really, with a lot of the, what we've seen, the, the encroachment of, on our freedoms and mm -hmm. our constitutional rights that government has done over recent, we are in no position to talk to anybody about democracy anymore. 100%. Right. And by the way, we're What's a happened? constitutional republic. That's so right. Like, yeah. We're not a democracy. Yeah. We're a mm -hmm. constitutional republic. But we got a lot of things to fix. That's part of the reason I'm running, you know, and I, I think we agree that the world is in chaos and... Mm -hmm. I always tell people if your house was on fire yeah. or if your there was thieves in your house, which we do, the government, <laughs> or yeah. if there was a domestic situation where mom and dad can't get along, which happens where, where there's so much division in the country. Yeah. I mean, who do you call? Do you right. call a politician? No, <laughs> of course no. not. You call your no. local sheriff. That's mm. right. Why? Because we're trained in experience in restoring balance and order to chaos. Mm. Every day we get calls for service. We are expected to show up, and within minutes we are expected to start to restore balance and order to what is a chaotic, chaotic situation. Yeah, that's that's so. Yeah, that's great. Washington needs people that are willing to restore balance and order. They need to show. I'm not a politician. Yeah, I don't want. I want term limits. Yeah, I yeah. want campaign finance reform. Mm -hmm. I want all the things that average politicians don't. Yeah. We're being led by cowards and opportunists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're being led by men and women who are too afraid to stand up to the to the to the crazies out there. Right. We're being led by people who are only there to take opportunity from the American taxpayer, and we gotta we gotta break our cycle of sending the wrong people back. Yeah. We yeah. need yeah. Uh, we need honor and values. Yeah, really. And what we need is more more educated voters too, because yeah. term limits, you know, that's that's one solution. But I don't think that is the solution personally, no, right. because quite frankly, they're gonna keep. It's going to be a wash and rinse and repeat type right, of thing. Right. You know, it's it's people out there that actually need to wake up and realize what they're voting for has a direct yeah. effect on mm -hmm. them. You don't have to have term limits. If you realize somebody's no longer doing the job, you have to realize it. If you no longer realize that somebody's doing the job, vote them out. Right. You know, and term limits may or may not help, 
but it's a, it's it's a start, I guess. The I mean, fact that we have some of these people back there in D.C. that have been back there as long as they are. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't let them clean my toilets, oh, yeah. let alone <laughs> right. run well, my like, government. I think right. the bigger thing is uh, looking at what they were their net worth when they went in compared to when they leave. And compared Isn't to what their crazy? salary is. Yeah. yeah. They're all yeah. just rich yeah. after that. About so that? Nancy Pelosi, salary? how about if, you? If <laughs> you? If you take your company public yeah. and you get a tip on it, and you buy stock, they'll throw you in prison for that. That's, That's right. Insider right. trading. That's right. Yeah. But they can get involved in companies that they actually have a, a an yeah. ability mm -hmm. to push a company a certain way. Wasn't uh, Nancy Pelosi? Was it, well, yeah. Oh, wasn't, yeah wasn't John Kerry somehow related, like with Heinz ketchup or something like that? His wife. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's the yeah. heir of the Heinz ketchup. Yeah, imagine that. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. the same guy mm -hmm. flying all over the country. And first yeah. of all. I'm all I'm going to say about because uh, uh, we can go down every road. <laughs> oh yeah, about can. climate control. Oh, God. oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. First of all, you can't fix homelessness in in San Francisco. <laughs> uh, so yeah. don't tell me you're going to control Mother Nature, right? Or yeah. that you're going to figure it out. Yeah. And they find the scientists that they want because there's plenty of scientists say oh, that yeah. it's a bunch of garbage. So that's another one. I mean, look, uh, folks, we can go on. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> oh, the conspiracies. <laughs> are, I mean, and when yeah. you look at climate control again, uh, you, we'll we'll get your comments all five off here because yeah. um, here's what happens when they need control they need to create some type of emergency yeah. and that is the least volatile emergency for them right Co now right. Climate control. I right. can't get you to do things yeah. I can't yeah. get you to give up your freedoms unless I can scare you COVID right. yeah or yeah. if I can scare you that the world the sky is gonna fall in 10 years mm -hmm. yeah. which it's not yeah and the world goes through cycles Mm -hmm. You know, oh, yeah, there absolutely. are floods. There always have yeah. been. There are yeah. fires. There are always have yeah. been. The arrogance of the human being to think and up to the yeah. that you can control that. Right. The yeah. only thing they're controlling with climate control is, is you. you. That's <laughs> I, knew, I knew that was coming, man. Yeah, that, that is the only thing they can control. So yeah. if you want to support it. me, you can go to sheriffland4senate.com. Yeah. Um, you can donate there. It doesn't matter what state you live in. Well, local politics, I think, affect your daily life more than what Absolutely. national politics yeah. do. Your, your senator in Arizona, whether you live in Nebraska or Florida mm -hmm. or Alabama, your senator in Arizona, that senator affects every state because right. you vote for all 50 states. That's right. That's right. So you want to know that there's a good senator in Arizona or New York or wherever because they will vote on bills that even affect us out where, regardless of what they, where state they come from. Right. And so um, you can donate money. You can sign a petition if you live in Arizona or you can... Um, Pray for me. Sheriff Lamb dot com. Sheriff Lamb dot Sheriff dot com. But yeah. easiest is Sheriff Lamb dot com. On Instagram, American yeah. Sheriff. On Facebook, Sheriff Lamb. On Twitter, Sheriff Lamb One. Yeah. On uh, Facebook or uh, YouTube, I think is American Sheriff. So yeah. only, yeah. Fans, only fans, only fans, only fans. Only fans. Only fans. <laughs> <laughs> right. I wish, man, I wouldn't need to campaign finance. If I had <laughs> only fans might be something. Uh, hey, man, if you want to get away with it discreetly, dude, it's, yeah. it's, it's feet finder, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Feet no, feet no, they want to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, so we should, we should so talk about it on our yeah. live stream too. It's about Sheriff Lambs. Yeah, yeah. Com, right, right. right. For for me, uh, if people want to find me, Matthew Thomas. I'm active usually on instagram and on linkedin so linkedin i'm matthew thomas on instagram i'm deputy underscore one time yeah. everybody calls me deputy one time which yeah. is weird like when you get called by your social deputy media name yeah. <laughs> one deputy time. one time right. yeah there's one, a whole one, story yeah. behind one that here you go and, right, right, and did you have a book i did i did write a book yeah can, 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 i wrote a book called uh, interceptors the mm -hmm. untold fight against the mexican cartel and you can find that uh I, my website's the easiest one to go to it's one time nation.com yeah, One that's time nation. great. Yeah. Great. Well, this has been, and I got a couple books too. You can go oh, to, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's easiest sheriffswife.com cause I'll sign them. I'll personalize them. Yeah. Um, my wife has two books. I got two books. I that's got, awesome. uh, American sheriff, traditional values in a modern world. And then my second book is called American sheriff rules to live by, which is based on the poem by Rudyard Kipling. If, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so I tell stories of founding fathers of hope and courage and determination. Cause I know we've talked a lot about a lot of crap today, but the yeah. truth is this is still the greatest country in the world. Yeah. Right. I, and this absolutely. is the Alamo of freedom. Yeah. There is absolutely. no other place to go find it. And so it's incumbent upon us as Americans to protect what we have, to fight for it. If that means that I got to go back to DC, the repugnant thought of living in DC, <laughs> yeah. I am willing to make that sacrifice cause I'm determined to be free. That's awesome. And, and from what I understand yeah. too, it sounds like Washington needs a sheriff. Yeah. Washington needs a new sheriff. Sheriff, sheriff right. Lamb. That's, yeah. that's right. That's, that's it. Specifically Sheriff Lamb. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Now before, specifically Sheriff Lamb. Yeah, before, right. we, before we close this out, though, I got to ask you guys, getting back on the subject of guns, you know, because oh, it's, like, it's like one of my favorite it. topics, right? right? What's your sidearm what, of choice? Oh, oh, sit down. Get out of here. We were down with Ray Cash Care and a few yeah, other guys yeah, doing yeah, this. Yeah, They're yeah. like, do one push up. And I knew. I was, uh, I've been to the academy. I know <laughs> what this means. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. And uh, I, I was like, screw it. I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Um, I carry a Glock 34. Nice. Okay, long slide yep. mm-hmm. um, with optics on it. Yeah. And you know what your pistol's for, though, right? What's that? To get, to to get you back to your yeah. rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so we have a Psyonix rifle that I have. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, that's not yeah. my personal one, but that's what we use for work. Yeah. Uh, I've got a personal 5150, which I actually like. The breakdown system on the 5150, really good. Nice. Probably my tightest gun. I like it. Um, they built a nice gun. Um, but yeah, every day it's the Glock. Uh, yeah. with an extra mag and um, man, I should go wrong that. Like, like the yeah. long side yeah. chief yeah. deputy how about you uh, I am a Glock 17 yeah. and it's uh, an MOS so I've got a, a red dot on it as well and then like Sheriff said we, we carry the Psyonix rifles and then uh, my uh, I carry a 48 with uh, mm-hmm. optics on it as well right. uh, for concealed and uh, I probably carry the 48 more than I carry my 17 because yeah. um it's a weird thing. These admin. this will tell you state yeah. of the world. Uh, <laughs> I I carry <laughs> yeah admin, <laughs> yeah. but I carry my. Uh, yeah, yeah, why why, why do you even carry? <laughs> 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 I, I would think you just like get in and just put it in the drawer. And just no, no, <laughs> no no no! I'm still a gunfighter, dude. <laughs> so like <laughs> chips and stuff in yeah. it. <laughs> but the uh, the concealed uh. I carry like more than I've ever carried before because oh, uh, the world is so crazy. Yeah. So yeah. I carry concealed at home. Like mm-hmm. when I'm just chilling, I carry yeah. concealed if I go to the grocery store. So I carry that 48 more than right there. With and the family. irony is I carry the 34 everywhere. Yeah. I don't shift. I don't carry. He's a little I, bit taller. I fly with it. He's a little bit taller. I fly with it. I Everywhere is the 34. Are you able to fly, like, you fly on the hip? On uh, we hip? can't talk yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. It's a special no, stuff. So, yeah. I flew with when I was in the Bureau. So the feds get a UFAM number. Mm. You, we yeah. get endless numbers, yeah. so we have to go through the national law enforcement uh, train a uh, transportation mm. system. So you have to notify them, say, "Hey, we're going to be traveling to X place," and then they give you a For number, work. and you show up, yeah. and you just yeah. fill it out. They don't check your bags, but you you, you go through the uh, where people exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You just backpack full of booze. Uh, yep. uh, no <laughs> Everyone. <else. laughs> no. no. All right. No, we My wife though wants me to carry her shampoo and junk because <laughs> yeah. they don't check the four <laughs> ounces yeah. so yeah. you can carry that's right. <laughs> that's too yeah. good, man. Well, uh, awesome stuff. Uh, great great conversation. What yeah. do you carry? Uh, honestly. Well, so my everyday is my 365 Legion. I love that gun. Yeah, I love my little Sig 365 and and that's 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 typically my go-to. Uh, I've got a got a couple of that are like yeah. you know i actually got the uh the 47 right now that sits it's, it's yeah. one of the it's one of the bedside guns you know 47 yeah, yeah man it's, it's actually sitting Super over there. my bedside yeah. gun is the ar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well i've got it my mark 18 right yeah. there too my, you know, yeah, like, yeah i got an ar-15 <laughs> on my bedside. look if i'm barely waking up yeah i just need something that's gonna yeah get me a lot of shots uh, and uh, yeah, really uh, quick uh, yeah yeah uh, that makes a lot of sense man well fun times what about you kai what's yeah, your kai? Kai carry? i carry uh dual 50 caliber uh, oh, oh, settle yeah. down, bro. Uh, <laughs> I care some bullshit. for the rest of us. <laughs> so when Kaya, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. He's at the gym every morning. I can yeah. see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. yeah. No, I uh, just a Hellcat. Yeah. Well, well, go, when go you were, so yeah. we were we were out there and and surviving man in yeah. Georgia and we, he gets this awesome course set up. I thought it was really good because it had a lot of different type of shooting yeah. platforms. So he's going to show us how to do it. So he fires there the first go. shot. There we go. Got to run to the second one. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I would loved it, dude, because I would have done the same thing. So he comes in and slides on it, but it's like rocks. Oh, and good. And bam, yeah. he hits it, and it just kind of like pops him right back up and oh. cut your leg up I, pretty good. I fell so hard. I don't think I've ever, I, I don't <laughs> yeah. think I've ever fallen that hard. Like, it destroyed my pants. Somehow, my, though, yeah. you still made it look somewhat graceful. So I, mean, those you know, two I just got right back up. I just yeah. I hit the ground, yeah. and I knew I, I got hurt. 
I, 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 as soon as I hit the ground, I knew thank I God hurt. for adrenaline yeah. because yeah. my knee just hurt, mm. and then I cut my hand real bad right yeah. here. Yeah, but. You I, was, I was in a gunfight. Yeah. But yeah. I thought yeah. you would have slid. I thought you would have slid on it too, and it just like yeah. nothing. Yeah. Dude, I fa like face planted. Like oh, okay, no. so the gun is in my hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just bang bang, and I'm just running with the gun, and then I fell real hard, and trying to protect the gun, finger yeah. off trigger, I hit the ground like that with my knee, and destroyed my hand right here pretty good. My oh. pants ripped and cut real good. I'm bleeding from here and here. Just got back up and just bang bang. Ran. That was the beginning of the course. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Course, tire yeah. swap and everything. Still did it. And then when I was done, I holstered that gun up and I looked up. Went back and picked up his pride off the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But hey, man, if you finish the course after taking a but beating like that, that that's good. That's yeah. a pretty good learning yeah. lesson for those folks too. I was like, guys. Here it is. It doesn't go this the way you think happens. it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Knee pads help. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, no, that's for... Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, right. Uh, All right. Well, good conversation. Yeah. Sheriff, awesome Brother, time. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Chief Deputy. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys so much. I, 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 gotta, Thanks, I, gotta, yeah. just, I have to say this. It's one of my favorite podcasts. What an honor. I've wanted uh, this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Respect the heck out of you. You, like, really, you, you got to talk to him. You got to hang out with him. You know... You realize how amazing of a person you Thank are. Thank you. And I want to. I wasn't going to talk about it, but I'm going to say it now. I'm really sorry. I want to tell you to your face. I'm really sorry for what happened to your family. Yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I don't think I said it, but uh, for those of you who don't know, a DUI a kid yeah. hit under oh, the influence Jesus. of alcohol yeah. and drugs yeah. hit them coming home from work on December 16th, yeah. and immediately we lost my 22 year old son, yeah. 16 month or 11 month old granddaughter. And my daughter in law, and so oh. yeah, thank yeah, you. I, what, what, I mean, I mean thank you for everybody's prayers. I, there were so many yeah. prayers and support, it really made the situation. Um, honestly, that's how we got through it. Right. So, thank right. you, dude. I, I, yeah. I, and just to you know, sympathize yeah. a little bit, I can't even imagine my beautiful fiance and I. We've got two, two little ones of ourselves, twins, yeah. you know, that are that are approaching eight months old, and I can only imagine. And, and I'm with Kaya, sincerely. Oh, what, what a leader you are, yeah. And I honestly. sincerely mean this. What a that happened to you myself included a lot of people could not be bringing themselves up mm. and you were up there you were still on your social media just yeah. standing strong and praying with people like, i i just that was i talk, talked to all my family about it i was like i cannot it's believe mm -hmm. we all knew there's there's a huge tornado yeah, going yeah. inside you just lost yeah. your, your, your your family and yet you're out there, you're still leading. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that's why and way to honor you them. should be yeah. the next senator. I appreciate Sheriff it, brother. I, I, I let's appreciate change it. that from sheriff to yeah. senator, yeah? Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. Do it. yeah. yeah. But right. I still got this next year as sheriff, yeah. too, yeah. so yeah. that's yeah. we're going to give him hell. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. do it. But thank and you, brother. And we'll brother. do everything. Yeah. I personally, as Kaya, and I'm sure Clint will do as well, we'll do everything I can to promote as much as I can to get the word out. Yeah, you got my word. And that's it. It's time for us, to we the people, to take our country back. That's right, man. So Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, man. Awesome right, time, guys. guys. Yeah. Thank y'all so yeah. much. God bless you gentlemen here, Thank your you. families as you well. as well. God bless all of y'all watching. We'll see you yes. next time at the CF Podcast. God bless, guys.